This is Sneaker Gears. My name is Levi, and welcome to, uh, I guess, a new segment called Tech Gears. And today, I really just wanted to break down the unbelievable accomplishment that is the Nike Kobe AD NXT FF. This is really an impossible uh, kind of feat that I don't think any other uh, shoe or any other a uh, sponsor or athlete would be able to pull off, or except for Kobe. Uh, he really took the best from a lot of shoes from both Nike and Jordan and pulled them together in such a way to bring an incredibly well-balanced shoe that you're just not going to find. Now, I've had three plays in these, so this is not a full review. This is really uh, going over the impossible task of what Kobe asked Nike to do. So whether him, his team, and really what you're getting for the... So we're going to start with the price at $200. You don't need to spend $200 on a shoe, but this is a very uh, elite high performance, well-crafted, fine-tuned, uh, really piece of gear for any athlete. I liken this very much to something like a Porsche GT3. You can have, I don't want to say equal fun, but uh, plenty of fun in another fast car for a lot less money. And uh, whether it's a Ford Focus ST or RS or a Civic Type R or Golf R, whatever you guys want to use, uh, that's a, a really quick car that you're not spending a ton of money on. But the, Gol the Porsche 911 GT3 is really just a fine-tuned work of art and if you don't know cars and you sat inside it you would think man this car is not even finished there's pieces of metal in the car which is a roll cage there's no air conditioning there's no air radio or navigation like what the heck and that's where you kind of see this it looks very functional the style on this is very uh performance first with not much take or thought given to the aesthetics uh, but with that price point so going over that really quickly uh, let's get into just the material so the materials on the upper someone has commented like hey this is two hundred dollars why does it feel like uh, you know a plastic bag but it's not this has stretch to it and it actually feels very reminiscent of what we're getting on the two hundred and seventy five dollar Vaporfly next so this is lightweight this is thin this is breathable and on top of that we're also getting if you can see through the swish here this is the quad fit upper used on the 350 dollars adapt bb both of which making the fit on this unbelievable and for one of the first times ever a truly wide foot friendly kobe from the last you can see here the white base and having an upper that's completely molded and stretched to your foot no matter uh, what kind of foot you have now they also took that a step further there's over five different materials on this shoe that really uh, fine-tune exactly what it's needed to make it as light as possible and to get that fit uh, they didn't go with the motorized adapter that BB just because that's kind of heavy with the motor the batteries they went with the fast fit system which they took from the Jordan 33 which is another $175 shoe now unlike the Jordan line where they had kind of a different lacing system that kind of worked kind of didn't this took more from the adapt BB lacing system where it really does lace up more traditional just like you would imagine your laces on a regular shoe and it really pulls you back in and into the shoe so you really have that nice pull by drawn into the heel that Kobe does as well as that additional ankle strap as well as a really nice plush tongue and a lot of padding so anyone who says they don't have a good fit for this on their foot is one possibly a narrow foot I don't have that so I can't imagine how that would fit but also because this can torque down so much you still should be able to get a nice solid fit as well as anyone who talks about heel slippage I would venture to say you're just not getting the right size or you're not torquing it down enough so you have all that from all these shoes from the upper uh, to the tightening mechanism so let's work your way down to the base which is where the support is starting from up until pretty much right now this last month and I know we have the alpha dunk and the zoom rise which are getting us a nice stable flat base we actually haven't had this uh, up until we had the why not one you can see right behind me here that had a nice flat wide stable base as you can see here 
And just kind of putting this next to it, you can really kind of see how wide this really is with the traction and, and just giving you that stable base that you want where it's starting from. They're also giving you a nice heel clip which is similar to what we had on the Epic React, where you have a really soft cushion, but you want to give a little more stabilization. Now you still have a heel cup back here, as well as a lot of padding. You have a more durable material here on the inside or uh, medial side. And on the lateral, you have that quad fit, which is giving you that additional support for lateral movements. So you have a wide base, you have a heel clip with an internal heel cup, the additional support with that Velcro ankle strap. The torsional support is not provided by any shank or carbon fiber, but by the mechanism for the fast fit system, that kind of motor right here, which gives you a nice torsional rigidity to it. So you're getting one of the most supportive Kobe's we've had since the Kobe 9 and arguably maybe the Kobe AD mid. So you're getting something that is not only very lightweight with the materials they've chosen, but also very supportive. Now, working away to the cushion, this is a React cushion setup. Unlike what we got on the Kobe 360, which was Lunar with React that gave us something really soft. They had to put a lot of support on it. It was very rounded, and a lot of folks found that uh, slightly unstable with the addition of that squared off, kind of flat base, nice wide outrigger. You guys can see it there, hopefully. Uh, this is now doing React with Kushlan, giving you a ride similar to what we got on the Kobe or the KD12. Now, this is giving you almost all of the impact protection, which is very equal. I played with both one on each foot and you're getting a lot of the impact protection and you're getting probably 30 to 40 percent less rebound or energy return on this and the point of that is uh, this is a little bit lower to the ground it's a little bit lighter it's more stable so it plays more like a kobe so you're getting the best aspects of the kd12 but in more of a kobe sense where you're close to the ground you feel quicker so for anyone who's asking which shoe should i get they're both absolutely fantastic cushion setups and just taking a look here you can see i like how they put kind of that material where you're not sitting on just the rubber so you have a little bit better grip again that adds to the stability the containment your foot's not moving around and you can see kind of the color change. Some people have said that the possibly this is the cushion in the forefoot and the React is pretty much the rest of the shoe. And, and that could be the case. All I know is that it feels much more stable, much more planned. You feel quicker, but you're getting all that impact protection and you're still getting a little bit of that energy return in, in just a fantastic compromise. As far as the design goes, I don't think we're going to be getting a Kobe Pro Troll for every model. They did the Kobe 1. Uh, they're going to be doing the Kobe 4, obviously. I think they'll probably be doing the 6 and the 8, so a lot of the more significant models in the lineup. You can argue the 5 possibly will be in there, but my point in saying I don't think they're going to do like a Kobe 2, but much as Jordan with the Jordan 31 paid homage to the Jordan 1, I really feel like the Kobe FF is paying homage to your Kobe 2. The way the strap is set up, the way it's more focused on performance, you can tell that wide base. This was actually a take on the freestyle with the segments back then. Uh, this is uh, not necessarily a great looking shoe, but it's performance based, it's Kobe, it feels very comfortable. The materials were incredibly high end, and especially just with the leather they used. Uh, obviously, this one is my dead stock pair, but I actually do have the entire Kobe. Kobe 2 lineup, which was really cool that they had their uh, strong and fast and then their light version. So you have three different versions of the Kobe 2. So obviously they took the more, uh, I guess, style that people know most with the one strap and you're just getting a lot of similarities. I, I love how they took a little bit of the retro and brought it back in where this is definitely not a pro tro uh, but this is giving homage to the kobe line and what's cool about looking at this shoe a lot of people have said hey it looks kind of like a chuck taylor in front with a kobe performance in the back but when you look at the shoe you really can't think of anything one you know it's a nike you see that there but you know it's not a lebron it doesn't have that huge cushion it's not a kd uh, it's not anyone else this looks quintessentially kobe 
without even knowing whose signature shoe it is, you can kind of look at it and be like, yeah, Kobe's the crazy guy and his team that wanted an all-purpose, absolute high-performance shoe. And that's what this looks like. So I think they achieved almost the impossible. I will have a full review coming at you soon, as well as more comparison details. But they were able to pull the best from just a lot of shoes out in the market. Uh, I do have behind me, I didn't talk about that, the Curry 4. And the reason I have it out here is this is one of the best fitting shoes uh, that has come out in recent years. I think many people will agree. I don't like the shoe for a lot of reasons, but the fit is amazing. And I'm getting a lot of that here, where this is just an awesome, awesome fit with all the materials and choices they've made. So you're really getting uh, the cushion set up, the support, uh, the fit, uh, the materials and everything, even the traction. And we'll touch that in just a moment. Uh, it is much thicker than the last few Kobe's in the most recent years with the Kobe 80 Exodus, uh, the Kobe 360, where they've made sure this is going to last you a full season indoor. I don't know how it's going to be outdoor. I I'm going to tell you it's still still flexible but if you can just hear it there it's still very hard so I'm glad they made those improvements I will be taking these outside for a few runs and we'll see how fast or how much they wear down so stay tuned for the full performance if you guys have any questions please let me know I'm more than happy to respond and, and comment and let you guys know whatever uh, you are trying to decide but uh, with all this tech I at least wanted to give some insight into what you're buying and as of right now these are widely available simply because it's a lot of money and I don't think a lot of folks a lot of players out there know what they're getting so hopefully this video will answer some of those questions. As always, this is Levi with Sneaker Gears. I really do appreciate all you guys, and I'll come at you later.